that everything's set up, I'm gonna give the intro. Welcome on in, everyone. This is going to be uh, a Dead Rising All Bosses tier list. I have just done a, another run of my All Bosses, and I would like to talk about all the bosses, because I've never really done it. Like, I've kind of generally talked about them, but honestly, it's never really come up. Well, there you go. It happens fly. So, well, actually, wait, maybe I didn't. That might be another guy. Some other guy uses the name. I don't know why I fly. I, I haven't... I don't know if I actually did. It might be another guy. I don't stream DVD if that's what you mean. But, this would be all bosses in Dead Rising from 1, 2, 3, 4 off the records bonus bosses. The ones in Case 0, the ones in Case West, which are like three more bosses added in. There's not a whole lot, but they're all listed here. Uh, I'm calling them bosses because calling them maniacs or psychopaths doesn't quite work. Um, you can judge my opinion on this. I'm not going to be doing it purely from a speedrunning standpoint because I think that is a trash way of doing it. Uh, a lot of speedrunner opinions tend to be, this is good for speedrunning. That doesn't really make for an interesting thing for casual gamers. So we're going to be putting on a variety of factors. We're going to be putting things like the fight itself, themes. Oh, is it Ghosty Boy? Oh, it was me. You know, it's the fight itself, themes, the weapon you get, um, music, pretty much every factor that can go into the fight. Uh, also, what it requires. No, we're not putting in the seven minute auto scroller. That's not a boss fight, that's glorified waiting. Uh, I'm just gonna be going in order for what we see here, uh, for all the stuff. Uh, I think this will be a good a good judge of uh, the game. Uh, I guess we have the Dead Rising 1 bosses going up to Paul here. Uh, Dead Rising 2 goes up to uh, Evan. Uh, we have Harjeet uh, and Stacy. And then we have Hunter to Gary. And then we have Queen Sandra to Calder. The, sci the scientists are a boss fight, and we will be talking about them. So I'm going to be putting it there, everything. Personality, character as well. The that goes back in the theme. All right, chat. Anyway, let's get started with the Dead Rising 1. By the way, I have Dead Rising boss music looping, so hopefully it's not too loud. Hopefully it's not too quiet. I put Randy on s and I'm subbing. Yeah, you'll see. Anyway, we're starting off on Carlito. Carlito's the big guy. Carlito is weird to start things off with, because Carlito is unique in that he has three fights. And, like, all three of Carlito's fights are different. But you know what? Carlito is going to solidly be in the A tier. Car Carlito is a very easy A. Carlito is like the heart and soul of Dead Rising. First fight, one of the best opening fights you could have. Second fight, still pretty good, rough and mean. Third fight's the problem though. I, if you're judging Carlito only off every fight, that third fight keeps him out of S. The car fight sucks. I like the car fight. My God, that car fight blows. Carlito thematically is amazing. We're listening to a song right now. It's, it's a groove, right? And he's a mandatory fight. You're always going to be fighting him, and it's kind of a good thing that he is as high as he is. I think we're starting off on a good note with Carlito. I don't have much more to say other than that. He, he, everyone's fought Carlito. You have to do it. And I think it's good, like, all stages. He's a good tutorial, good mid. The car is the only problem. But you can ignore the car, so he gets A tier. He starts nice in the A tier. Anyway, going to Isabella. <laughs> Isabella sucks, she's C. Uh, Isabella feels like a C. She's not the worst fight ever, but the problem is Isabella's fight takes place on a motorcycle. And the motorcycle is kind of mean as a whole, not only because it's a janky fight, but one, you can constantly get run over. Two, you have to, you can't really melee her as easily. And I played this younger when I was a kid, I always had problems meleeing her, where it was like, oh, many chance, oh, nope, she got away. If you try jumping over her, that kind of works, but she'll also just do permanent donuts. So, stuff like that. Keep in mind, by the way, I want to mention for this, we're not going to take a character being bad or something. If a character's thematic and they're awful in that way, that's fine. We'll kind of go on all these things. Isabella as a character as well is pretty much, you know, near to the Dead Rising franchise. Uh, she works better as a support character. She doesn't work as good as a boss. Her boss fight sucks. The actual fight itself is kind of mean. I also have a special hatred Isabella because every now and again you'll get knocked into the grocery store and if that happens you immediately lose the fight way to make this fight better just the motorcycle needs to be more functional like there's so many problems that happen with just the motorcycle also not only that there's zombies in her fight too so you fight them more than the motorcycle I feel like this is accurate like I feel like Isabella is just kind of there I'm doing it based on everything like uh Isabella as well just I think a lot of her arc is in her actual like Comrade team. She's not when she's a boss. She kind of sucks, but when she's on your team, she's kind of cool as a character. So she gets a C. 
And you'll see, we're going in order. We're going in order here, so we're we'll talking about the order. I'm not gonna jump to other ones later. Yeah, her fight's just, it's there. Now, Steven. Steven gets a A. Steven's an A. Now, what keeps Steven out of S? Wait, what song is this? We'll keep it up right now. We'll see. Steven is A. He's not S. Steven thematically is awesome. You know, this is my store. Is this even a song? Yes, there we go. Okay. Steven's not us. A lot of you do not remember the Steven fight. You do not remember it as well as you think you do. Steven, thematically, one of the best fights. He is a mandatory fight. Really cool. Great song. In fact, let me give you a taste of his song right now. I'll actually play his. All right. You know what? I should actually play the boss fight as we go for their theme. Steven has a good theme. Thematically, is amazing. Going into it, though, this is the first of the optional fights. He's not mandatory, right? With Steven, do you remember how awkward that fight is? You go into anything. You you get knocked up, he pulls out his shotgun. He constantly is turning his cart. It's really hard to actually get to him, and it's kind of janky. And the fight itself is, you know, a lot of people tend, don't tend to remember the fight. Especially if you ever watch speedruns of this game, you kill him immediately and you forget the bad. If you're not using the speedrun tech, you have to run around the, the market. Did you ever try to get the jump on him? Shotgun. He'll turn his cart and that AoE damage gets you. It's a rough fight with a lot of knockback, and that's really the only thing keeping me out of S. The fight's not as good as you remember. Thematically, everything else, perfect. I like him being a story mission. I like that he beats up uh, Isabella here. Uh, I, I can appreciate a lot of the stuff that he has with that, you know? But Steven gets A solely because the fight's kind of awkward. It's not as good as you remember. That's my argument there. Anyway, next theme, chat. You know who's next. It's Larry. All right, Larry is a Larry is one of my boys. I love Larry. I've grown to love Larry as he goes. I've made the argument so many times. Larry is the antithesis antithesis of Carlito, and I think Larry is. Might be one of the perfect final boss fights. Uh, the only real issue is that it's too much happening in this fight. I think A is a good place for Larry. Like, I hear S is like no imperfections at all. Like, I would say Larry is like solidly in the middle of these two. He's kind of between the A and the S. The main problem, though, is that he'll heal. Uh, the game really expects you to be high up. Uh, he does a lot of your health in one hit. He's a great final boss, but the problem is just... You have to manage Carlito, you have to heal. There's some issues. Personally, I think he's an S, but I feel better putting him under A. Let's put him above Steven. Let's put him above Steven, but under Carlito. I think that's a fair spot to put him. I think that's a very fair spot. Does Brock even have a theme? He does. All right, Brock's the true final boss. He is the true final boss of Dead Rising. You takes your stuff, he does. Be easy. I don't think the Brock fight's bad. I don't think it's amazing, but the Brock fight is a solid B. Uh, Brock is for B. B for Brock. Brock has an issue where the fight thematically is really good. Thematically, it's great. They take away your weapons, one-on-one -on -one fist fight with the guy. At this point, you should be in endgame. Your melee weapons should be good. And while he came late in the game, I still like the fact that he has so much going to Carlito, he has so much going to Frank, you kind of see that. But, well, you build up a lot to the Brock fight, there's just way too many playthroughs I've watched and I've, you know, done myself. You just... You can... you It's way too easy to cheese. It's... It just... It doesn't work as a whole. Also, I'm assuming this includes the tank. The tank's just kind of there. Like, the tank's all right. It's just sort of waiting for it. But the fact that you can just, you don't get to do the fight as cool as it is, is my problem. It's way too easy to where you don't really get that hand-to-hand -hand action. You either infinite hit him or he'll infinite hit you. It's never, it's never balanced. It's never a balanced fight to me. You eventually learn what to do as well. But it's still a neat fight and I think it does do it well. It just, it has some problems. So I think B is a very solid name for Brock. Anyway, Cletus, oh Lord. Cletus is... There's gonna be a running theme here. Oh yeah, I picked the ender. I'm going late tonight. I'm gonna to do a tier list. Well, let's get that Cletus music going, shall we? Uh, let's listen to the Cletus song. Or Cletus. There we go. 
Cletus as a character is cool. I really like Cletus. I think he nails the idea of someone being really panicked in something. And again, this is one of the things where thematically he's great, but the problem with Cletus is, my God, my God, I'm putting it above Isabella, but under Brock. It's just, you can never move. You can never move. You're not meant to move in this fight. Either one, you'll die. No, Cletus is the gun shop owner. And Cletus's fight is to get in there, he's defending his guns, Second Amendment, and he's going to shoot you. He kills the guy in front of you. And he's a secret fight, so you don't even know he's there, which I love that. I think that's a really good thing that keeps him in C. If you thematically, great. But the problem is, you will always get shotgun hit. You get behind the counter, he throws you out, and then shotguns you again, and then throws you out, then shotguns you. You're never going to be at a point where this fight's going to let you win. The best thing to do is to walk outside of the room and snipe him, or hit him with another gun. I'm kind of doing it as everything. I'm not really doing it based on speedrunning. I am doing it personal enjoyment, um, but I'm trying to do it mainly as how it's fun to fight these fights. As well, I want I should mention this earlier, but this is a new game basis. This is gonna be New Game Plus. I don't like New Game Plus. I think New Game Plus ruins all this. This is gonna be from a new game file of what you should be expected to be. So like Larry, for instance, going back to him, I'm assuming you're probably around level 30 in a new game file. I'm assuming you're probably gonna be in that area. For Brock, you're in the end game, you're gonna have all your stuff. Like, I'm assuming you'll be level appropriate. And Cletus is an early game fight. That's the problem. He's an early game fight, he's either too mean, or you just get stunlocked. A lot of people fight him after Adam from the mini chainsaw, but that's the problem there. All right, chat, I hope you enjoy this next one because we have our first entry into D tier. I'm gonna get K tier for Kent. Yeah, Kent is D for dickhead. <laughs> I like that one. Kent is a, a nice D for dickhead. Why is Kent a D? Cool. All right. All of Kent's redeeming factors are story-based. He's a foil to Frank. He serves a nice purpose of being obsessive with the scoops. His theme song's kind of nice. But Kent sucks. He never take, you know, he can never get the picture of him properly. He takes forever. And then also, oh, you didn't take it just right? Too bad. Like when I played this when I was a kid, I thought you had to take like multiple pictures. I took like one picture in hand, it was like, you failed. <laughs> Uh, I don't put him an F though. I don't think he's an F tier fight. Uh, I do like the gimmick. I do like his themes. And yes, I do like the idea that he has two different fights. That's a very good thing to mention because with Kent, uh, Kent either one, um, you fight him with your weapons, which he dies immediately because he's a late game fight. That's not there. I am. This is Kent's theme. Yeah. And then the second one's a melee fight, which is, it's a bit cooler, but Kent's just too easy and he's too annoying. Nope, this is Kent's theme. I think that leaves on Kent's. We put K, uh, K for Kent's because he's a dick. And there's a K in dick. All right, anyway, up next. Up next. Oh, well, A tier. Top of A. Go to the top of A. I only have one complaint for this fight. There's only one complaint. There's one complaint for this fight. They need a they need a death cutscene. I wish they had a death cutscene and why do they keep respawning? That's it. Perfect timing on the spawn. They are the perfect hidden boss. It's dead rising at its peak. Easily dead rising at its peak. I think it is just chef's kiss. I don't need to leave it anywhere there. They respawn. I don't think I'm getting stuck's a problem. I think they drive the direct amount of fear into you. I can leave it at that. They belong at the top of A. They are going to stay at the top of A. Anyway, where's this next song? Hold on, I need to pause this one. Hold on, where's the next one? Where's the next one? Wait, do I not have it? Oh, there it is. All right, you knew this was coming. You knew that was coming. This is the fastest of my life. Perfect fight, awesome aesthetics. He's a clown. Best weapon in all of Dead Rising. Look at him, man. The best weapon in Dead Rising, hands down. Mini Chainsaw is iconic. Dead Rising 1, it's in all of the stuff. It is literally Dead Rising. You think of Dead Rising, you think of that blue Mini Chainsaw. You get the Wonderland Secret Plaza. Song is a banger. I'm gonna leave it running. He drives terror into you. When he dies, the chainsaw's in his stomach. The fight has an interesting gimmick. You're supposed to melee him until he blows up a balloon, and then you shoot him, and he'll drop the balloon, and then he'll poison himself, and then you get the hits it. 
It's such a cool fight. You're not meant to get the traditional. You can't shoot them normally. You have to pace it out. It's one of the only ones that feels like a fight, and it's so cool. I really can gush all day about Adam, but... Also, he's one of the first kind of forgivable enemies of the game. Like, I can't really call any other enemy that we've had so far forgivable for their stuff. You can argue maybe Carlito and maybe Isabella, but, like... In terms of, like, forgivability, dude, he's caring for the kids. He's a sweet man. He's a sweet clown. With a banger. Alright, anyway... Adam is S. Adam is our first entry into S tier. No, he's not. You know his story, right? Adam? No. Adam's story is that Adam the Clown was trying to protect the children, so he kept them on the, uh, the thing. Because he saw people getting murdered by zombies. His story is genuinely that he's protecting the children. That is his actual lore. He went insane after seeing people get murdered by zombies. That is the actual thing. Yes, don't let your bias against clowns rule the judgment there. Yes, that is his story. It's awesome. Anyway. You know, Cliff's theme is not as much of a banger as I remember it being. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Anyway, this is an easy one. Cliff is right after Laird. I think Cliff's a solid A. I think putting Cliff under A is mean. I, I think Cliff belongs in A. Honestly, this is the fight people think about when they think Dead Rising. This is the one where people are like, Dead Rising hits hard, man. It has the story. Everyone thinks Cliff. His family died. He's sympathetic. He's really the first one you meet that's sympathetic. Then you, it's very outward. People love Cliff. Only Also, good melee. Machete's a cool weapon. I like the machete. It's an awesome weapon. Now, my problem with Cliff is uh, he jumps in the holes too much. If uh, you don't know what you're doing in that fight, I'll just jump in the hole. You have to go up and hit him, and I'll jump in the hole. It's one of those fights that just... its mo When it's good, it's good. It just There's a few things just keeping it out of the S, and it's the holes. And also the flares that stun you, and it gets a bit rough. So, Cliff's a pretty short note. Anyway, we're on Joe. <laughs> All right, Joe. Joe is a fat C. Joe belongs in C tier. I like Joe because she teaches you about survival mechanics. I think Joe is a fight that I've grown to love the more of sped ran, which I know I'm not using a speed or bias for this, but the more I play the fight, I really think of what it's trying to do, and it's trying to teach you how to manage the survivors in an arena. I think Joe's fight is one of the first ones in the game that really features the survivor that can be in danger, because Joe will attack the survivors as you go. She'll tase you, and then she'll start beating them up. As well, you have to manage your time, because if you don't get there early, the survivors will be dead. It's one of the first really big survivor missions, and I like the fact that Joe teaches you that. Her weapon's terrible, it's a taser. Her character is just kind of, a lot of people don't like Joe. Her song's kind of decent, like, I, I like it. But originally I thought Joe would be lower when I first did these, like, I thought she'd be, like, here, but no, I think Joe's a solid C. Her fight's fair, too. You know what, my only complaint about Joe, really, is that I think she should be earlier in the game. Like, Joe should be maybe the the third fight you do, like, maybe replace Cliff with Joe, make Cliff a later fight, make Joe an earlier fight. Because, like, Cliff has his guys in the in the little room, Joe puts all her people in the, uh, in the room with you, and she'll attack them. Which I guess is a nice lead-in, but Joe just doesn't have a lot of hard-hitting attacks. She has one overhead swing that will do three bars, but that's it. You don't have the death swing from Adam, you don't have Cliff stabbing, you don't have Steven's ramming, you don't ever really get a cool attack that isn't just a glorified punch, so. That's kind of how I feel about Joe, which I think is fair. Anyway, does this family even have one? Where the hell is the song for this one? Do I even have the song for this one? From the Hall family. Do they even have a theme? I don't know if they do. I'm gonna look it up. Hold on, do they? Oh, let's see. Uh, All family dead rising theme. Do they even have a theme? They don't have music. They have an unused theme. Yeah, they don't even have music, so let's just use Carlitos as a default. All right, back to Carlitos. Hall family! Oh, wait, they use Carlitos! I think they use Carlitos' song. I know they... I think they do. Their cutscene's good, and the Hall family is... I'm probably gonna be moving them throughout the tier list. I think they're a low C. 
I think they're a very low C. Like, the high D or low C. I don't think they're better than that. I'll give it because a lot of people feel for the cutscene and they don't use music. They have a weapon you can get from Cletus, which is more rewarding from Cletus. Um, and also, yeah, it's whack-a-mole, but they do shoot you while it's going. But my problem and everyone's problem when I was a kid, I was like, hey, he's feeling bad for it. He doesn't want to kill us. It's just, why can't I save Thomas? Of any survivor to be savable, why not Thomas, right? Like, he's feeling bad, like maybe he would repent for it. But nope, you just kill him and then, oh, well, they're dead. They don't get an actual cutscene either. But like, unlike the comics, they don't have the redemption, they don't have the music, they don't have a lot going for it, so. Low C, the Hall family will go. All right, chat. Now, this might be one of the first controversial, possibly. This might be one of the first controversial picks. Sean. Yes. I think Sean is one of the best characters in Dead Rising 1. I think Sean is easily one of the coolest characters, and the more you think about Sean, the more it really burns. Sean is a boss that I think when you first play this game, it's not going to sink in because he just uses a sword. One, he spawns in the cult. He spawns in a whole mechanic you have to care about in the mid game that can kidnap you. It's a whole thing you have to be concerned about that's admittedly kind of awesome. I like the cultist. I think it's neat as well that you have someone really, you know, taking advantage of the situation instead of just powering in fear. And song is also weird. Not bad summits. I have to turn it up a lot because it's quiet. At least this mix is. He has five survivors. Joe had four and is the prelude to Sean. He has five survivors. Four of them you have to manage. You have to manage four of them. His death scene, yes, the sword goes into him after he's praying. And the thing that really disgusts me that I love. One, well, two things. One, his book is brainwashing. So you get a better survivor AI if you grab his book. Two. Did you know what Cheryl was doing in that closet? What do you think a scantily clad woman trapped in a closet is going to be used for after the boss fight's done? He's sacrificing people, he's claiming maidens, let's use a polite turn of phrase there. And his fight's actually a really good fight. He actually bobs and weaves. Uh, he's one of the toughest fights in all of Dead Rising. He's mean. No, he's not watching a Dices on Twitch. But he's actually a really tough fight, and it's kind of closer to the way Adam works. It's not like, oh, run away and hit. It's not the, um, just run away. Like, Joe's kind of okay as a fight, but she doesn't really have a full attack. John has quite a lot going for him, and I think he does reserve a spot in S tier, even if we end up moving him, like, further down. Like, he, I think, will be one of the few S tiers that we have. And last but not least for Dead Rising 1, we have... Paul. I rank Paul above the Hall family. If the Paul family, if the Hall family's in C... Paul's a better version of the Hall family. That's what he is. He's just better. Instead of one, you're dealing with three. I like that he's savable. I think it's neat. I like that he's kind of sympathetic, and he has a very unique weapon that nobody uses. I think he belongs in low C, and he will be going... Keep in mind, people are going lower and lower as it goes. Paul's in low C. For Dead Rising 1, this is what I have. Kent is easily the worst of Dead Rising 1. Adam is definitely the best. Uh, we have a good amount of A tiers, though. Like, we don't have anything truly bad. Most of them, like, are mid or good. Like, most most of our charts are going to be in the good area, right? So, I think this is fair for Dead Rising 1. Uh, the finale, unfortunately, does go into P, but I think everything else does pretty good here. And now we're going to... Before we get into anything else, we're going to a unique one, which I think I played the song earlier. The song's weird, but I'll play it. This is Jed. I'm skipping his song. It's weird. There we go. All right, Jed is honestly, Jed's cool. I didn't think I'd like Jed when I first played Dead Rising Case Zero. I thought Jed would be annoying. Uh, I think Jed's cool. I think Jed belongs in A. All right, uh, yeah, no, no, we can put him in A. I think Jed's fine. I think Jed belongs in A. I think he is a solid A tier. I don't think Jed's bad on the A side. Eh, maybe, hold on, he could be. It could be a B. Nah, I think he works. He's a final boss. He does the case zero. Uh, he's kind of just a maniac who's zombie hunting. And I think he does the Hall family gimmick better than the Hall family. Plus, cool boss fight, finale, and you fight him in the junkyard. I like it. Also, you have to fight him from a low, low level. I think that's neat. I like the fact that you don't have, you're not going to be powered up at all. It's not even really a new game fight because he's the final boss of case zero. 
but I think he's very nice for K Zero. I think he's a solid wrap up. Although, from what I remember, I kind of remember using the shotgun the whole time. So, also, we're hitting the point where combo weapons are coming up. He has a weird song, though. I'm not a big fan of his song. It's okay. Anyway, does TK have a song? Let's see. Oh, it's getting better. Okay. Where is TK's song? There it is. Okay. I'm gonna skip forward. Dude, TK's song sucks. Jesus Christ. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is it. This is it. This is it. All right, not as bad, but definitely not amazing. I think TK belongs in the Bs. It's kind of funny that the B stands for final boss in this tier list, apparently, but I don't know. I just feel like it's a, it's a slightly worse version of the Brock fight. I guess it's kind of cool that you get the weapons instead of having just to rely on nothing, but you have to manage Rebecca while hitting with the weapons. And eh, maybe put it above Brock. You know what? Yeah, above Brock. Above Brock. Yeah, he's up there, Mirage. I put uh, Sean right up here. Like, admittedly, the more I think about it, TK is just a less tedious Brock. You take away your weapons, but he has weapons there. You have to manage the Rebecca Stacy mechanic. I don't like his auto scroller, but that's only in off the record. It's not in the base dead rising too. And either way, the fight's okay enough. He has some decent attacks. I like TK more than Brock. You know what? I can explain it. TK is fair. TK is mostly fair. Like he hits you with very basic of fights. It just TK feels like he should be an early game boss. He doesn't feel like an end game boss. I want to put another boss higher up in a moment, and um, it's not gonna be TK, but it'll be similar to TK. Also, as we talk about these, might reevaluate some, but TK belongs at higher than Brock. I think that's a good place to put him. Alrighty, Chai, we're gonna have Ecdysis is addicted to A tier because... Actually, am I addicted to A tier? Yes, I am. Oh no, the A tier. B for Booba? See, now you've convinced me. You've convinced me a little bit. I mean, if I put them in B, it's for Booba, but A is for ass. So, under Carlito. Crystal and Amber, I think, are uh, one of the coolest parts about Dead Rising, uh, two at least. Uh, for both of them, A is for, I guess, Asa. You do Asa. Also, welcome on in Mirage. But the twins, I like the mechanic that they're a mid game enemy. I think. The fact that you kill one, the other will begin to kill herself. Thematically, they're great. They make funny the whole time. They say your dick can't get hard. I like them. They have they have awesome music. Uh, at this point, they've kidnapped uh, Rebecca, so it's kind. It's it's enough of a like stake where it's nice. Um, I don't like that an off the record. It takes a million dollars to get them, but honestly, their fight's pretty damn good. I think they have a very solid fight. Uh, as well, the one on two is nice because yeah. Uh, you have to deal with multiple stakes at once. Although, you can only just aim for one, the other will kill herself. I think also the fact that they don't make it too hard is nice. Like, if you had to kill both, I think it would be a bit riskier, but the fact you only have to kill one, pretty damn good. So. I think that is a good way of putting it, chat. And we'll see how as we go. Because next we have... Ooh, that was a nice... Thank you for the nice biddies, worded animal. We have Boykin. Ooh, I want Boykin ramp up a bit. Hold on. There we go. Thank you, 69 bits. Boykin. Boykin belongs. B. Above Brock. I think Boykin is a better version of Brock. I think that's what he is. He's just a better version of Brock. Kind of mean. Need fight. Kind of dumb that he's even a fight, though, because why can't the military take out the, the gas zombies? But, uh, he's a neat fight. Good song, good thematics. I like the fact that they get Rebecca, but... It's just kind of a weird fight at some points. He's definitely one of the harder fights. Oh, the more I'm thinking about it, I think if Boykin was thematically cooler, I'd put him in A, but I just don't think that thematically is that cool. It's, oh, the military, the guy from Dead Rising 1 can't do the job now, so now he's a regular fight. It's like if you fought Brock, but he had guns. But I like Boykin. I think he's fun, but... Something just missing to make me care enough about this guy. He just spawns in and then like, oh, I guess he's shell shocked now. He's more of an example of the gas zombies. But 
But eight ball? Yep. Anyway. Sullivan's theme. This is okay, this is it. Sullivan! Sullivan! I don't want to do too many is the problem. Do I need to make this longer? Maybe. Sullivan, I'm trying to think where I'd want to put him. Somewhere in this region. Somewhere over here. You know what? I think he's... I think he's a step above Carlito. I think he deserves to be right above Carlito. I think Sullivan's a compelling enough villain throughout the game. I like his twist, and he's what Brock wishes he can be. Because Brock has the whole thing, all right, we have a standoff. You can't do the thing. Sullivan lets you bring weapons. If you try using guns, he'll knock you off the platform and he'll snipe you repeatedly. If you use melee attacks, it's actually a pretty cool fight. And I think it's just a better version of the Brock fight. As well, as Sullivan's a more compelling villain. He's there the whole game, he's a neat twist. And also, the music sounds like actual final boss music. I like Sullivan. I think Sullivan's one of the cooler picks. I debated on putting him in S, but I think there's other, I, I can't put too many characters in S, so that makes sense. Like A tier can be a bit crowded, but S tier can't really be super crowded. So I think Sullivan belongs right on between Carlito and the comics. Hey Chad, it's been a while since we had one of these, and this will be a theme here. Leon sucks. Leon sucks. Leon sucks. And Leon pictures gold? Leon sucks, dude. He's a motorcycle fight. He's... I don't even know if he's a character. Mars, thank you for the channel for 11 months. Much love, hope you're having a great day today, and thank you very much. You enjoy the emotes and the scissors once again. Mars Much love. It's funny that a lot of the Dead Rising foils are going in D tier. You know, it should be F for foil. But Leon is the foil of Chuck. And yeah, I agree with that, Hudson. I think if there's just more of an interesting gimmick to his fight, maybe make it a race, make it more like the intro, like it's point thing. We need S plus. We could actually use an S plus tier. And if I add one more tier, this kind of fixes it. But no, we'll, we'll play what we have right now. We'll readjust if we have to. But Leon is just, it's an annoying fight that you get stun locked with the mode, like, you know, the chainsaws. It's better than Isabella's, but like thematically, he just doesn't have the clout. So we put him here. Also, his arena is too big. You have the whole plaza. If he runs away, you have to follow him throughout the entirety of like, it's worse than the convicts is they're a small park. This is like the Vegas strip and it sucks. So. All right, Chad, this will be one of the most obvious answers possible. Look, look. Music's rising up. He's rising up. He's rising up. He's rising up. Oh, my God. The king of cuisine is second place. Antoine is probably what you think about when you think of Dead Rising 2. He's the Adam of Dead Rising 2. He's an easy dude. The song, the king of cuisine, the flair, the personality. His fight is one of the meanest fight. It teaches you the idea of a revenge hit. It is the ultimate skill track. I think Antoine is what you think about when you think about this game. I think Antoine is just, he has everything you need. He's mean though. He's very mean. I like his healing mechanic, honestly. I think his healing mechanic is a good lesson. It's funny because I dogged it in Larry, but the problem with Larry is you also have Carlito. In this, you only have to deal with mechanic and the fight. You don't have to deal with a whole other thing. So. Also, I like a cannibal in a zombie game. What can I say? It is, yes, the chef's kiss. Tonks laughs. There's enough with Antoine where I think he's fitting. All right, I'm gonna ask Twitch chat really quick. How many should we put in S? Like, how many are we allowed in S tier? Like, how many would you think? Like, I would say four, four max, right? Like, four, four or five max. As many as deserve it. No limit. Four or five, then one for S plus. Wait, you want an S plus? I want to do, I, I just do five, I think five. No limit. I'd say five. I think four or five is a good limit. I think I'm, I'm, I'm assuming four to five limit up here because we still have a lot of game left. We have a lot left yet. So. I say five up to you. Five sounds right though. I think five is good. I just put on the first thought and just later. That's fair. 
We can always do an S plus to limit that one, but we'll do we'll work with this for now. Anyway, I've gushed about this man enough. I know this just sounds like me gushing, but you know what? Let me tell you about a fight I weirdly like less. Uh, you know what? Seymour is a solid B. I think Seymour is a very solid B. The song is okay. His theme is that he is a mall cop who uh, is getting mad at people because he's a mall cop. He's tired of being a mall cop. He's like Paul Blart if he got angry and he wasn't as fat. But the idea of Seymour is... He just sort of hits you with a nightstick, and his custom weapon, the gun, doesn't really, like, it's a cool weapon to use, it's just, admittedly, I don't think Seymour has enough going for him where I really just, he's a mall cop. As well, if you try to use range attacks, he'll shoot the gun out of your hand, melee, he just sort of hits you. I don't think it's a bad fight, but I definitely don't think he goes beyond B. I think B is a solid place for him. I think B is... He's the first boss. He's the first final boss not in B. Oh, I know Boykin. I forgot about Boykin. I think Seymour belongs in B. I think it's a solid fight, but there's better fights to be had. I do like his thematic of having all the hanged dudes, though. I think that's cool. Yep. I mean, the fight in melee though is you just. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let me analyze my list here. Because he is the god of a new world, chat. He is Slappy. And Slappy... Ooh, where'd I put Slappy? That's the real question. Where would Slappy go? I gotta, I gotta look ahead right now. I gotta think really quick. You know, I think I could justify this. I think Slappy's a low S. I think Slappy's a low S. He's kind of meant to be the Adam of Dead Rising 2. He's meant to be thematically cool. It's very just goofy, but in a terrifying way. And I like that Slappy has, I think like one of the most clear weaknesses. Dead Rising 2 as a game kind of did this thing where a lot of the bosses are supposed to have weaknesses. And the whole idea of Slappy is that if you jump kick him, he falls off his roller skates. I think his weapon is really simple. It's very iconic, having the flamethrowers. Uh, the roller skates is kind of a fun thing. It's similar to Leon's motorcycle and Isabella's, but it's like if they were good. It's like if the motorcycle gimmick were good. I like that he'll fight the zombies. He doesn't just fight you. And honestly, it's a simple fight. I think simplicity works in Slappy's favor here. Yeah, you can do a lot to mess with him. I think the creativity of this fight's nice. His weapon's not very good, which is kind of why he's the bottom of S. I do think that, you know, thematically, he's saved up here, and the fight's not offensive. I think it's a solid, solid encounter as a whole. And also, realistically, even if the encounter is difficult, there's a wine right next to it. Also, he's a pretty early fight. He's kind of like Antoine if Antoine was less mean. And then the song's fun. Alright. Time for another fun one. Where is the man? Yeah, I need the song coming up. By the way, this is probably one of my favorite themes in Dead Rising. This is going to be the best in the game, by the way. Hey. Hey. Get, 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 get. get. Randy, he's A. He's high A. The theme is good. The theme is banging. Randy puts the right amount of creep factor into his game. He is a threatening boss, but also he is fair. He's a mid early game fight. He's like right after Slappy and Antoine. Oh, really? No, I like that whole chain of Slappy and Antoine. Um, obviously, Randy has the problem where he's kind of creepy, but the idea is. Every Dead Rising game has a quote-unquote sex fight, I suppose. Uh, Dead Rising 1 had Joe. She's meant to be the one in there. Joe's doesn't really work. Slappy's is uncomfortable. The idea of the terrifying giant chainsaw, the fat pig man, uh, the crying bride, which I love that aesthetic. Randy works. And I think my only issue is it's a bit awkward fighting him in a church. I think the arena lets him down. Like, let's talk about Antoine again. Antoine, kitchen. Very easy fight. He has food. It's a very nice area. I like his restaurant. Slappy, you fight him really just on like the second floor. His theme is in front of a toy store. Randy though has a bunch of pews. His stage is small and he's fast. And it either becomes one, you cheese him in the pews, or two, he just eventually gets you. And then you get knocked 80 feet. It's kind of awkward, but I think that's the only gimmick I have with him. 
Also, fun fact, if you shoot him in the dick, you'll weaken him. So he has a really funny weak spot. So, I think Randy deserves to be high up. I think he is a fight that is quite interesting. And, yeah. Boom, boom. All right, run the next one here. Uh, what the hell is their theme? I don't even see the theme for this one. They have a theme? Do the snipers have a theme? They do, right? I found it, okay. Right. Alrighty, so Twitch chat, this is gonna be a little bit longer, but let's put these gentlemen, the militiamen, at the top of C tier. I think that is fair. Uh, I do need to play an ad on Twitch side, so that's gonna play for about two minutes. I'm gonna spend time talking about the militiamen. The general idea is I think they're a better version of the Hall family. They're annoying, but ultimately I do kind of like them a bit more because they feel like more actual boss fights. Uh, I'll kind of get more in depth on each of them, but just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not gonna try to do too much, but the ad's gonna play. If you're watching us on Twitch, ad block, Twitch Turbo, or sub to the channel and avoid the ad. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay. Militiamen. I'm playing it now, by the way. Militiamen! They're a pain in the ass. That's really the thing. They, they just sort of... Like... They're just the Hall family again. But, the very least is... They're not a fight. Are they... The, the Hall family is not a fight. The Militiamen are a fight. So when you get to them, they're actually a pretty interesting boss fight, and there's four of them. You have uh, Deets, Big Earl, I think Johnny, and Derek. Yep, the fight's engaging enough. Um, it's kind of the best of the C-tier fights so far. Dodge the ad? Perfect, you dodge the ad, that works. They're definitely going to be the top of seeds here at the moment. And with the four guys, there's no fundamental difference. They're, some of them just look different. Deets is older, Derek, uh, Derek is fatter, Big Earl has a, a, you know, a larger penis, and then Johnny is the youngest. Um, they all have a sniper rifle as their weapon, which is kind of nice to have. It's a neat weapon. Um, they'll kind of shoot you throughout the thing, and they're more annoying than anything. They kind of just stun you. Uh, Big Earl is easily the worst. He's right in the middle of the fight. Um, if you don't deal with them, they're annoying. We're in a row. Yeah, I do the uh, the ad. Uh, we have about one more minute of the ad. No, no, I'm saying uh, the weapon they drop. They all drop uh, sniper rifles. That's the weapon of dropping. Uh, if they get close, they hit with machete, and that's th also they all have the grapple attack, or they can stab you. Uh, attack wise, I think it's neat. I think they're a decently terrifying boss. I think a lot of players would probably get scared of the militiamen. Uh, I think the idea of the sniper rifle plus the machetes and that grabbing attack is fair. They're definitely fair fights, but like. They kind of feel like... Also, their song just, like, ended. Wow, their song literally just ended. <laughs> they don't even really have a song. It just is, like, this... It's just this. Like, it's not... It's fitting, but, like, I guess you can't really develop a song for four people. Yeah, welcome on in, Artense. I'm doing a Dead Rising tier list right now. We're ranking all the Dead Rising boss fights. So, uh, I think it is a fun gimmick here. And maybe Hudson. But uh, in terms of the thing here, most of the fights tend to be the same thing four times. Uh, while the arenas change, I really just don't think it's... I think they belong at the top of C. I think they're like a perfectly average fight. I don't think they're necessarily bad, but also they're just a better version of the Hall family. Which, the Hall family is annoying. I give them props for being like absolutely the uh, lampooning of the whole like, my, my right, my guns, man. Like, I, I like the gun gimmick they have. I know they're trying to be like my se the second amendment right. They're trying to have the... What's the parody. I think it's fun. I think it's really fun. I think it really hit the nail on the head back even like, what, 2008? 2010? Whenever the game came out. Anyway, let's go to a decent boss, because we have next Carl. Where's the song? Carl. Dude, where is Carl's song? I can't find it. It's hiding from me, chat. They've hidden it from me. I don't listen to the song. Oh, there, wait, wait, no. Where is it? Do I actually not have a song? Huh. Yeah, I actually have a song. Sullivan, Dwight, Reed, BB, TK. Oh, there it is. Postman. They call it Postman. There we go. Okay. Postman. Carl. By the way, he's double D. I think you belong at the top of B. I think he's, I think he's cheeky enough where he's likable. He's likable, but his fight is just... 
shotgun and hitting you with the shotgun and then going postal. He's charming, but he's arguably the worst case of stunlock. He just, you can't melee him. If you ever try to melee him, he just spins and they all 100 to zero you and it's rough. In terms of his theme, I think it's really good. I like his music. I like the, you know, going postal. I, you know, weirdly really enough, a lot of games hadn't done that. Stop the record is bad. Even then, it just, a lot of the stuff is rather basic. He does a spin attack and he does the guns. Like, he's a very simple fight, but I put him above Seymour highly. Like, Seymour's down here is like, eh, it's all right. But Carl's up here like, yeah, you know what? It's solid. I kind of switch up. There's more about the, I guess the bombs. Like, I feel like you don't get the bombs enough or you get them too much. It's never a right amount of bombs. So. Yep. We are Calorant. I'm going late today. We're doing a Dead Rising tier list. All right. So I don't think this... I guess this is two fights. But I want to play the theme for both of them. All righty. Let me introduce you to the most mid-fight of all time. Uh, putting, I put him like right in the middle of the chart. Ted, you're boring. You suck, Ted. You die immediately. He's a level one fight, but he's just kind of like, he's like Joe. He's just sort of there. We all know nobody cares about Ted as much. We care about Snowflake, who's a B. Snowflake is good. On paper. On paper, I love the idea of Ted and Snowflake. On paper, Snowflake is great. On execution, I don't know how many of you try doing the stake throws. Snowflake will almost never listen to it. You're gonna be there forever just throwing the stake. She doesn't grab the stake. You throw the stake, she doesn't grab the stake. The snake will fall, the stake will fall to the ground. The stake will just get banished because she'll launch it 80 feet away after hitting a zombie. She doesn't want the stake. You stand on a high rock, she doesn't want the stake. Killing her, she's a tough fight. Uh, she'll pounce on you. He's also a level one fight. You fight her in the beginning of the, of the game. This is a mean fight. I think it was executed better and good in an A, but like, it's a mean fight. I love it thematically. Song, good. But, yeah, admittedly, that's kind of my issue with Ted and Snowflake. I think Ted is definitely the more like, I put Ted dead in the center, by the way. I want Ted to be in the middle of his chart. He is the most average man in existence. Like, if you want bad fights, below Ted. If you want good fights, above Ted. <laughs> I think that's fair. If you want a good fight, anything above Ted can be considered good. If you want a bad fight, anything under Ted is bad. Like, Ted is the most mid-man of all time. So. Alrighty. So, let us go here. Hey, the song actually ended perfectly. No, you cannot consider Reed without considering Roger. I'm putting them in the same spot, which is... Uh, I'm trying to think where I want them. Where can I put you? I don't run out of space in A. But like, let's say here. I'm running out of room in A. Wait, can I put more people in A? Let's see. Oh no, I can't. Okay, it doesn't run out of room. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Yep, I think Reed and Roger are a solid A. I think thematically, they're great. I think they're one of the most interesting gimmicks. They kind of do the twin fight a little bit worse than Crystal and Amber, but I like the way they work. Um, it's interesting because a lot of people don't know it, but both of them have clear weaknesses. Uh, Roger, if Reed fires his gun, Roger will be afraid. He has the scimitars, he has the range. Uh, Reed as well, if you hit him in the back, he'll take more damage. So you're meant to kind of take advantage of that. I think the idea of Killer Magicians, it's perfect for Vegas. It's supposed to be a Vegas game. I don't even remember if you're allowed to get their weapons. I think they just give you like the, the combo weapon for them. But admittedly, I think they belong in low A. I think they're a solid A. You do get them? Cool. I don't think I've ever used them. I don't think I've ever bothered to lose them. You get the weapons. Their weapons are awkward. He has a rocket launcher that fires fireworks and he has scimitars. Cool on them. I don't remember them being very fun to use them. Mr. Soren is decent. Good to know there. I don't think I've ever bothered to use it because at that point in the game, I'm just... This weapon is a better version of the combo weapon. And I think the problem with the combo weapon too is that it's a clunky weapon, so it's considered large. Meaning if you try using it, it just... Or you try swapping off it, pop. 
good idea and mostly good execution. I think they are rather solid. I like the dual mechanic and I think it's fun. I think they're a fun survivor. Or, sorry, group of, group of bosses, not survivor. Hey, Brandon. Where's Brandon's song? Found it. From my understanding, Brandon... The song just stop? What the... I'm gonna go forward. There we go. You need the best boss fight? I would rank them high. I thought about putting them in S tier, but I might rethink it. Let's just say I'll rethink these two. Like, these two... Like, Reed and Roger are kind of in the spot where I'm like... They're either A or they're... Like, they're they're an A. They're at least A. They're definitely above Jed. Uh, Brandon. I think Brandon belongs in B. I think Brandon can go right under Blaken. Uh, Brandon is a fight where I like the simplicity of it. Uh, he is fairly early game. I think he's before Antoine, in fact. But his gimmick is that he has a shard of glass and he'll hop throughout the lockers and throwing zombies at you. The locker part's kind of annoying. I like his uh, kill thing. I like his I like his death scene. The idea of the glass on his throat after getting infected. I think Brandon is the perfect idea of the the protester gone rogue. It's kind of devoted too much to the cause, man. And I think I like the fact they gave more revel relevance off the record. Uh, I like that they kill a survivor there, but I think he's a solid fight. He's definitely not in the area of Seymour where I think he's fun, but just thematically he just doesn't fall flat. I think Brandon is very solid. I just... The locker hopping happens too much, or the, the bathroom hopping is very just... It'll happen more often than you think, and that's not fun. Oh, he hopped in the locker again. Or, sorry, the bathroom stall again. I'm gonna avoid the stall. Yay. Awesome, right? And then the song's okay enough. It's not a bad song. It's a solid song. Just okay as a way of putting it. All right, now. Did these guys even have a song? Did they even have a song here? I don't even know if they have a song. I don't know if they do. Do they? I they're ready to mall music? Maybe. You know, we'll give them a... Uh... Here, I'll give them... Uh... How about the Fax Boss music? I don't know what this one is. Oh god, no, no, I know what that is. Okay, that's not that. No, no, not there. I'll just give them Snowflake's name. I like Snowflake saying they can have it again. The scientist, dude, come on, come on. Easy, easy S tier. You know what? Sorry. There, I've made the tier list. I've done it. The scientists are a group of scientists at the end of, I think, like 8 3. They die immediately. They're, they're, they're not a fight. They're not. They're two dudes who die if you shoot them. You get guns on the way there. They can infinite lock you. That's it. They're not even a fight. But you know what? Immediate S tier. Immediate S tier. You know what? Hold on. Hold on. We'll make their own special tier. Here, here, here. I got I got an idea. Here. Guys. There we go. They get below F. There you go. The chats. They get their own tier. They, they get the Chad tier. They're just... I think someone just programmed... I don't know why, but they're considered bosses in the game's programming, so it's funny. Chad S+, plus? fine. You know what? Fine. They're the nerds. There. And then, uh, here, I'll give them, like, feel. There, how's that look? Better? The nerds. All right, let's see the next one. Okay, BB Love, F. BB Love, F. BB sucks. I hate, no one likes BB. No, no BB here. How dare, no, BB sucks. You give, it's a fetch quest. It's a series of fetch quests. You love BB? I let her die to the zombies every time when I can. You grab through, you wear a suit, you find a tuxedo, you leave the map, you get her a bottle of whiskey, and then you do a QTE mini game. Like, admittedly, I don't think she's the worst in all of Dead Rising, but like... 
It just, then she turns survivor after like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. She's F. She's an F tier fight. Also, if you try to hit her, she kills everyone around her you. So, don't. Anyway, B BB's easy. She's not even really a fight. She's a fetch quest. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, imagine if Leon was good. There. Imagine if Leon was good. Chuck is a fight that really banks on the fact that you uh, you like Chuck Green. Which, you know what? We do like Chuck Green here. Chuck is a beads here. His fights also... Alright, so in Off the Record, they had Chuck Green instead of Leon. Chuck Green, one, is more sympathetic. His song is cooler. And last but not least... His gimmick doesn't expect you to be on a bike. It kind of assumes you won't be on the bike. What does that mean? With Leon, when you go to him as Chuck, it's like, oh, you know, here's the keys, get on the bike. And like, it assumes you probably should use the bike, you don't. But Chuck, it's meant to be Frank versus Chuck, and they tailor that fight. Chuck is like one of the only guys and does it well, where if you hit him, he'll start careening. Leon does this, it's not nearly as functional. Trust me, Leon is rough. Chuck works well as a motorcycle fight. He's going to be the best of the motorcycle fights. I know Slappy's not a motorcycle fight. I mentioned it earlier, but he's not that. Chuck is a motorcycle fight, and he just does it better because when you hit him, he'll actually careen. He has Molotovs. He'll actually start using them. He stops enough where it's decent. Also, the idea of him becoming a drunk after losing Katie is awesome. He's very thematically nice. Um, still a motorcycle fight, though, so he's the bottom of B. But Chuck belongs in B. I would put him in C for Chuck, but he's better than that. I think that's fair. All right, uh, Evan the Clown, the Clussy King goes in C. Uh, let's put him, I don't know, above Cletus. He's a weird tie-in to Dead Rising and clearly riding the coattails of Adam. Hey, you killed my brother. Wait, hello. How You're telling me Adam's brother is here at this time of year, this time of day, in this part of the country. Entirely localized in Fortune City Plaza. Or not Plaza, but the oh. Fight-wise, he's okay. I actually kind of like his fight. He's, he's kind of weird, like, a weird, unexpected addition. I don't think it's bad, but can you see him? No. But chat, hold on, it's not done yet because... I didn't tell you about Phase 2. The fact that you can punch him is hilarious. He goes above the militiamen. <laughs> the twist! You didn't see it! He moves one rank up. <laughs> I love his phase two. Phase two is hilarious. I think he deserves more for phase two. And also his car is nice, but you can get the car without him, so. Anyway. <laughs> oh God, all right. Now, a lot of you do not know this fight. You almost never see this fight anywhere. Harjeet. I think he's a, I think he's a low C. Arjeet is the final boss fight of Case West, and he is just... I feel like every time I've done the fight, I've polluted it out of my mind. He's kind of annoying. Uh, he's a level 50 fight, and like, I feel like it was the beginning of trying to make Dead Rising 3 and Dead Rising, like, 2 based gameplay. He's weird. His song's cool, his character's kind of cool, but he comes out of nowhere. Like... Alright, Big Pharma! It's based on everything, the whole fight. So we'll do the fight itself, just think about how it is, that thematically, um, sometimes weapons, they have it for the reward. He's the final boss of Case West, and Case West is kind of a letdown. If you haven't played it recently, hasn't it, Dr. Chick? Honestly, Harjeet goes in slow C. I don't think Harjeet is better than that. He's kind of just a weirdly tailored fight. Also, it's a co-op fight, which makes it weirder, because you're the co-op, and like... From what I remember, he does too many phases, but his song's kind of a banger. I remember enjoying the song a lot. I think too many phases is the right word. Like, it's a weird fight. Oh, Zone Herald, I'll be doing good today. I'm doing good. All right, now how can we forget? Remember Dubstep? Remember 2012? Lodi. Stacy, why? Why is this a thing? Why? Her music is dubstep. It aged immediately. This is her actual song. Her plot twist isn't nearly as good as Sullivan, who we had earlier. She had the decoy ponytail. You have the worst pun in the world that I love. You know what the pun? No, no. She stays low D. D for dubstep. Yes, D for dubstep. Or F for flat, if you want to put her there. 
but it's not as cool as Sullivan because they give you a gimmick robot crab. And also, it's really weak to the weapons immediately around you. Oh, you have a cool weapon? Doesn't matter. Use the hammer. There, you win. It's such an awkward fight. And thematically, it's, why does she have a giant crab? Why a crab? Ah, uh, yes. What's good for Uranus? So, like, the clown's fitting. Chuck is fitting. Crab. Oh, yeah, yeah. I will be putting it there, William. Why the crab? Why? Why the song? Hi, Groxy. Morning to you. I don't get it. It's always one of the weirdest parts of this game. Also, her phase three is terrible because it ends in QTEs. The only reason it's not in F is because at least she's a fight. Anyway, uh, we're going to be starting on Hunter for Dead Rising 3. Hunter, I am going to be putting into two categories. He is a two-phase fight. Uh, he is the 10 rednecks you have to kill leading up to him, and he is his fight himself. I think Hunter is actually a good fight. I think Hunter is a very solid fight for the game. Uh, I'm going to put him in a low B. I think Hunter... It's interesting because part one requires you to do the car, and his weakness is it teaches you how to dodge roll, and then you're supposed to hit the, the fire. And then you can punch him and learn. This is a learning fight. A weird learning fight, but a learning fight. His song is not the best because we're in Dead Rising 3 at this moment in time. But Hunter belongs in B, I think. He's a solid B. His story is that he became the king of the rednecks, and he's not as bad as the other rednecks, so he kills the rapist ones. But also, like, he's going to kill you. His last name's Thibodeau. I think it's Thibodeau. Let me double check. Yeah, Thibodeau. He's French. I think he's neat for the gang leader, but it's also weird how easily he's taken out by Nick. I don't know. Thematically, I wish Hunter were a bit better, but I think he does the job that, that he wants to do. I think he is a good first boss fight. Technically, Harry might... Wait, where is Harry? Where is he? I misplaced Harry Wall. Wait, wait. Oh, there he is. Z. There's Z. Okay. I was like, where is he? Because he's in really fight. I'll do it in the order it's doing it. Okay, anyway, Hunter's low B. Uh, let's go to Hild. Hilda? Hild? This is the booba fight. He's horny. Her whole joke is that it's a sex joke. Do you get it? She talks about the little death when she kills a man. That's another name for an orgasm. She says that she finished first. Get it? She had an orgasm. She makes you feel her titties. <laughs> ah, no. Um... I put her, I think, around, let's say, let's put her under the Militiamen. I think she belongs here. Her fight is kind of weird. You have to chase her around in the police station, and then you just fight her in a room. Notice, I don't like a lot of fights where they kind of take the person out of the fight and summon goons the whole time. She'll keep summoning the goons, and then she'll, like, yeah, when you actually fight her, she's decent, but she summons too many people. I think Hilda would be a more interesting fight if she had less summons and less just around her. Like, the fight begins the moment you enter the police station, she runs away. You kill four dudes, and then you chase after her. She fires a rocket launcher, you chase after her. You get introduced to prison zombie, you chase after her. You get the theme, and then when you fight her, you do a lot of her help after she throws flashbangs and shoots you. She'll jump out the window, she'll fire a rocket launcher in point blank range. It's weird. Not a bad fight, but definitely not. Definitely not one of the better ones. I think it's mid. I think it's a mid fight. Mid rising all, all bosses. All right, Commander Kane. This guy, I know who he is, but this is funny because this guy is barely a fight. Um, he doesn't even have a song. You know what he gets? Uh, we get dubstep. Uh, this guy is like D, low D. He's a fight, but uh. All right, so this guy is the fight when you raid the base. Um, he's the final soldier guy, Commander Kane. You play as him too in one of the scenarios, but his whole arc is that he's, I guess, leading. I don't even know what the fuck he I tried doing it, I got bored when I played it. Um, but for his actual boss fight, he just is a stronger footman. He doesn't die immediately, and he has a health bar, so he's not the nerd. And he's not BB bad, but he's somehow worse than Stacy. At least Stacy's interesting. Like, he just. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. If you can eliminate a footman, you can eliminate this guy. He's just a stronger footman. He's just larger than the others. That's it. He doesn't have his own song. All right. Evening, Ben Brave. You're doing good. 
Diego has one of the weirdest boss fights in the game. I put him on low C. Um, if you aren't expecting this fight, this fight is hell. This fight sucks. If you did not expect this, it is terrible. If you expected it, all right, if you expect, all right, here's two, two ratings. If you know what you're getting into, the fight is like maybe a right above Seymour. If you are doing this as most players are, it's a low C. Uh, his fight bugs out half the time. If you ever played a port of Dead Rising 3, uh, why you sure? It happens, Rombot. These things happen. But with Diego, you're supposed to knock him out of midair using either the guns in the arena or the throwables, and then at some point he launches himself at the top of the map and hits you with stuff. It's at least kind of a neat fight. Like, I give it some props because if you brought a gun, it's kind of fun, but if you didn't bring a gun, oh lord, it's like here. But I'll go between the B and the D and give him a low C. Steven's fight's not as good as you remember. I want to remind Steven fans that his fight's not as good as you remember it being. The yeah, Diego is the low C. Thematically, he's your friend and he wanted to go to space. He literally never mentions this. I don't remember him ever mentioning in the story. I'm a spaceman. He never mentions this. He just ends up in an astronaut costume that is functional. And then he throws boulders at you and he will ram into you. And then you hit him with like, you slap his head like that. And then he'll take damage. And then he becomes your friend and dies shortly after anyway. Diego leaves like almost no impact. So, next fight. Uh, are we good here? Um, where is this? Do I even have a thing for this fight? I don't think I do. Huh, does it? I don't actually know. Hold on. Uh, let me try this out. Uh, Dead Rising 3. She does not have a theme. Oh, okay. Uh, how about you use Hold again? She had a fun one. Okay. Uh, this is Marianne. Marianne, I am not salty from earlier. This isn't a rage one. Marianne is genuinely, I think, one of the worst boss fights in all of Dead Rising. I think Marianne is absolutely just a terrible fight. She wants to be similar to uh, TK, Brock, Sullivan. Hey, after a lot of Prime Gaming, enjoy the emotes and the scissors. And thank you, welcome to the swarm. Hope you're doing great today. Marianne's fight is she is a handicapped woman who is the CEO of Phenotrans or something like that. Like, she owns Big Pharma, right? Hey, they take away all your weapons. They give you an electric rake. You don't get any other weapons unless maybe you had combo weapons, but you're most likely using the electric rake. Um, if you're a low level of this fight, may God help you. Even if you're, like, level, like, 20 to 40, this is a tough fight. Why? It's buggy. Um, they have revenge hits, so that's gonna be bad, obviously. Um, as longer the fight goes, the more lethal it becomes. This is the only fight in the game that doesn't let you have any downtime. If you don't do this fight in, like, the first maybe two minutes, you're done. You die. Each section will open zombies, will stun you, and cause fires that will burn you to death, and there's no avoiding it because the whole map gets clouded in fire. You can't turn your whole map into a stage hazard. Like, I get if you make a ring where you can't leave it, but, like, the fact that the whole map becomes a stage hazard is my problem with this fight. And also, the game just, it's buggy self, doesn't let you do much here. Normally I pocket a level if I'm doing this fight, because it's so terrible. At least BB is fun. Marianne is easily the worst fight in the game. I think of a whole franchise. I don't think we're gonna get worse than me, uh, Marianne, actually. Like, you know what? Marianne, you're a nerd. Scientist, you've been promoted. No, no, I'll put him back. Anyway, uh, next fight. Where is this one? I want to say next fight is right... Wait, does he not... Do How many of these bosses don't have themes? Wait, does he really not have a theme? You're kidding me. Red doesn't have a theme. Hold on, Red Dead Rising 3 theme. He does have a theme, okay. He has a weird theme. He has a really weird theme. Okay, so Red is a two-prong fight. Part one, you have to defeat a crane, which is kind of interesting. It's not great, but it's not necessarily bad. And then part two is you fight him in a pit with all your weapons, and meanwhile, he will ram you. I'm not gonna lie. It really feels like Red should be in Hunter's position. He is one of the easiest fights in the game for an endgame fight. He's actually pretty bad. 
I would rank him uh, a little bit higher if he wasn't literally like one of the final bosses of the main story. I put him, let's say, in D. I think he's boring. I don't think he's interesting. I put him above Ken because at least he's not a bad fight, but for what Red should be, he's a terrible fight. He is the finale of 72 hour mode or whatever the main story mission is, story mode. He's not the finale of true ending, but he's the finale of story mode, which he's a crane. He wants money, I have family. No, that's his arc. He just wants money because he finds out you're worth money. And then he's like, ha ha, family, no family. His song's okay enough, I guess, but his boss fight, he rams you, dive out of the way. Did he do it? He's gonna ram you again. Did you do it? There's the fight. He doesn't get more interesting than that. Like, as mentioned in chat, he wants to be like TK, Brock, and all those guys. He just doesn't do it nearly well enough. Which is funny, because our next fight... Our next fights will be interesting. Uh, Hemlock. Okay, I'm going to be fair. I did not count TK's overtime. I did not count Brock's overtime. I believe Hemlock is right between Brock and TK. I think Hemlock is a solid final boss in all honesty. I don't think he's bad. I think he is similar to Sullivan, but doesn't hit as hard. He's kind of a weird final boss because like, you kind of only half expect him. Like Marianne does most of the legwork and then he's kind of there. And I like him. I like the fact that you fight a giant. Sh if you counted overtime, he would be, he would be like here. But I'm not counting overtime. I'm only counting the boss fight itself. He has a really cool arena, it's surrounded by zombies. If you're out of the arena, he'll shoot grenades at you. And if you're in the arena, he'll fist fight you. I think him using wrestling moves, I think him just kind of being at your level for melee is quite solid. Um, you have a variety of options to use. His gimmick is that if you hit his back as well, he'll be weakened and you can hit him. Um, as well, if you hit him in the saw blade, do a lot of damage. It's just kind of a neat fight. I think he's not as cool as TK, which is why I put him lower, but as an actual fight, I think he's a little bit better than TK. But some other parts that we're measuring here, we're not only doing just the boss fights. So I put Hemlock right at B. I think this is the highest that Dead Rising 3's had so far. Alrighty, we're now going to Wrath. Actually, have we done the whole? Have we done this yet? Hold on, we had Marianne. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, hey, we haven't actually got to this yet. Okay, chat. So we're going to one of the good parts about Dead Rising 3, which is oh, it's Morning Verstona. Harry Z. Wog. An history about guy. Harry, honestly? Hey. I like the. I like. Hold on, I need to adjust a little bit. There. I like this fight. I think this fight's a lot cooler than people give credit for. I don't know why people don't talk about this fight more. The fight is you're fighting the embodiment of Wrath, and he is pissed off because his wife cheated on him, uh, his kids hate him, and he sells refrigerators for a living. Um, he is Wrath, he's trying to meditate in his garden, he has killed people around him. Thematically, he's cool. Uh, he embodies the center of Wrath well. Um, his gimmick is that if you hit the gongs around him and make noise, uh, you would end up um, causing him to rage, and then you, you can punch him and get the quick attack. He has a cool weapon, the Guan Dao is one of the most unique weapons uh, that we'll be seeing, uh, at least so far. Uh, we'll be seeing more, but I like him. I think Harry is a cool fight. Also, his song's neat. I think Harry is a good intro. Or Z, I should say. Harry Z Wong Rao. He's a very good intro fight. I kind of like him in addition to Hunter. I think he does the job a little bit better, but Hunter's like really just, hey, here's how to dodge roll. I think they literally teach you how to dodge roll in this. Like, I feel like they wanted you to fight Hunter and then fight Harry, but nonetheless, Harry ends up being likely one of the first bosses you fight, and I think he's a great introduction to the game. I think he does the job very well, and surprisingly enough, Dead Rising 3 has better boss fights than people think they do. Alrighty, we are on Albert. Where's Albert? Part sheet's weird. I don't remember it being terrible. I started being kind of tedious. Alrighty, Albert. Albert, Albert, Albert. I put you above Stacy. Above Stacy. If only because his gimmick is interesting. So he is the embodiment of greed. He is kind of a mandatory story mission. I'm not doing it solely as a speedrun. I'm doing it kind of like the sum of their parts. Song-wise, it's kind of neat. His fight is creepy. This puts the horror in the horror game. The idea is that there's gonna be a bunch of clones running around the room. Uh, as you go, you have to find the real one by breaking his organs and killing his profit margins. Yes. 
Uh, with Albert, though, there's one huge problem that puts him so low. Because thematically, he should be, like, here. But when you actually get into the whole fight, oh, lord, Albert sucks. Albert sucks so much because every time you do damage to him, you pass out. You just pass out. And then you have to find him again and do it all over again. It's consistent. I don't know why. Every time you damage this fight, you knock out. And while it's such a cool fight with such a neat gimmick, it's such a cool finale, it's like, why am I passing out every time? This is why. The fact that you're a boss fight makes you better than Stacy, but my god, you can be there's so much more with Albert. And I really wish you were there. Okay, so this is going to maybe be controversial. I apologize in advance. Pauline! Thief. T is the game's motorcycle fight. Wow, I can't believe it. She's better than Isabella, luckily. But a lot of what people remember about Darlene is fat woman funny. I don't know how many of you remember this fight. This fight blows. She rams you with the spork and then you get a QTE. Her weakness is that she eats food and you cram it down her gullet. Like, thematically it's great, but like, it feels less like a fight and more like I'm just kind of watching someone eat themselves to death. Up for design. I think she's a very unique fight. And honestly, for Dead Rising, she's disgusting. She embodies gluttony well. I think she fits the theme she wants well. I just... There's not enough to make me put her out of sea. I want to remind you, by the way, chat, uh, as a general rule for this tier list, Ted is our breaking point. So, if something is above Ted, I think it's mostly a decent fight. If it's under Ted, I think it's a bad fight. So, things below Ted, bad. Things above Ted, good. That's a very fair way of putting it. I think Ted's the perfect benchmark. He's literally average. He's nothing. He's like... All right, we need a random character. Here's Ted. Okay, he's the benchmark. Darlene's a little bit above it. I think she's okay, but I want more out of her. No, her her thing is that she won eating competitions. I don't even know if she was mindful. She was a competitive eater. She's a gamer, and then people told her to go on a diet, and then she didn't. Anyway. Okay, I gotta give it to this alone for the theme. Any fight where the weakness is a man... ...doing a strip... You have to pole dance. His song is banging. It is a surprising fight to come out of this game. I don't think anyone thought a fucking Dead Rising 3 fight would be S tier. If you've never seen this fight, let me break it down for you. One, this song plays in the background. It's a decent dubstep fight. Um, two, he has a cock and ball cannon. He's the embodiment of lust. Uh, it switches from uh, ice mode to fire mode, so you can blue ball him. He has two psychopaths who are tied to chairs. He has a interesting gimmick. To enter his fight, you can't have any partners. He is a one-on-one. -on -one. Every other fight, you can bring teammates. You cannot for Dylan. He does not, re he requires you to not have teammates. He actually tells you, come back when you're alone, buddy. Something like that. Um, it's he plays with his food in a way. He's a mid-game fight, he's pretty solid, and thematically, it's gross. I love him. He's going on YouTube? Absolutely, this will be going on YouTube. So, I think the Dylan Fuentes fight is just really neat. I think it embodies a lot of the, uh, the sexual stuff well. Uh, Randy does it well. I think Dylan is just... He kind of encapsulates what Dead Rising would become in the best of ways. It's silly, it's goofy, and it's... Terrifying enough to think about, but it's so much fucking fun to do. You want Dylan to step on you? There you go. We have been going for near 12 hours. Hey, if you've been watching this, I'm gonna say, follow the channel, subscribe on YouTube if you're watching it there. Uh, social media, check me out on Twitter, and uh, sub to the Twitch if you are really enjoying it. I like the flamethrower, what can I say? He has a cock and ball torture. Think about that. Alrighty, this next fight. This is a fight I've actually grown to appreciate. I think Jerry belongs in the top of B. I think Jerry is an actually really cool fight. A lot of people aren't huge fans of Jerry. I think Jerry is someone that the more you fight her, the better it gets. Her song is banging. Uh, her fight is terrifying. She's literally using gym equipment. Very creative there. 
You can use her weight though, but it's kind of useless weapon at the end if you're wondering that. I kind of mentioned the weapons a little bit here. Like I mentioned the cock and ball cannon. Uh, I don't think Albert gives you a weapon. I can go get over all the weapons at the end of this, but like... Jerry gives you her weights. It's fun to think about it because Nick can just toss it around. But the idea of, you know, someone actually using workout equipment, that's creative. I don't remember the last time I actually saw a workout equipment boss fight. She's ripped. Uh, she gets mad because uh, I think he misgendered her twice. And then she decides to kill you. In all fairness, I don't think you should kill someone because they misgendered you twice. But thematically, her fight's weird because it's pride. I think they could dive more into the pride, which is one of my issues with her. But as a fight, she's fun. I think Jerry belongs at the top of B. And nice, by the way. So it's clinch. And it's a fun song. Alrighty. Hey, we haven't had one of these in a while. Guess what? Cool song. You're the top of F. Hey, BB. Get there. You're the top of F, Teddy. You're the top of F. Teddy's fight is sloth, and I don't... Alright, I can't blame the devs. How do you make a fight lazy? Give them drones. You destroy four locks. You win. The locks have markers on the mini-map. You'll find them. That's it. And then he literally shits himself as he dies. I feel like for gross out parts, Darlene did it better. But like, it just kind of, it's a lazy fight because how else, what else can it be? That's really the thing there. It's a lazy fight. Alrighty, this one. Kenny. So, Kenny is gonna be an interesting one. I think Kenny is high duty tier. You know why? Okay, so this is Kenny's theme, right? You listen to it? Okay, hold on one moment. That's Kenny's theme. And there's a thematically interesting thing about Kenny. Uh, because, okay, listen to this. This is Nick's theme in Dead Rising 3. Is it? Let me go back to the other one, maybe. I think this is it. Let me double check. Next team is weird. Anyway, the point I'm making... He wants to be similar to Nick. I think the idea behind it is... I think they try to mirror the theme a bit to Nick. His theme is Envy. He's the guy of Envy. We have almost been 12 hours. Yeah, I got one. I got one. And it just doesn't become a good fight. He has two missions. One of them is you have to help him with combo weapons. This is uh, everything. So everything. I'm trying to avoid main speedrunning takes. I'm trying to just give what I think happens. Parts of the game, you would naturally be there and as a whole. Kenny's weird. Most players will not be saying his gimmick because Kenny has a gimmick. It's making combo weapons. Did you make combo weapons throughout the game? Or did you bring combo weapons because you expected a boss fight? Guess what? You probably bought combo weapons in the fight and you're just shooting a, a bag of flesh until he dies. What's his special weapon? A ball of metal. He throws a hunk of metal at you. It's kind of funny, but like, admittedly, it kind of falls in the same territory of how can you make Envy a boss fight, which he wants to be Nick. Admittedly, it's interesting. I think his gimmick is kind of fun, but Kenny just suffers because he just wants to be Nick. I don't think it's a really interesting fight. Also, I would forgive this fight if it wasn't the last of the optional fights. This is the last essential, like, optional psychopath of the game. Out of the seven deadly sins, Kenny's the one who's the big finale. They really fucked up on the finales. Like, Jerry's kind of awesome, like, in late game. Uh, Teddy is boring in late game. Kenny is the last of them. Why is he there? Make him an early game boss fight or something. I guess you need time for him to be corrupted, but, like, also, you save him. You can save him or beat him. He's pretty useless. We don't like kick around here. You know what? He's going to nerds. I'll go back to D. That was not pop-up. We're doing good. All right. Now, I'm going to keep the song going because, honestly, the next fight, a lot you don't realize is a fight. It's Gary. Gary's a fight. I think you just beat the shit out of him. He's barely a fight. He's, he's just like the scientist or Commander Kane. I guess I can argue. I think he's a bit tougher, but he's not really a fight. You just sort of kill him. I'll put him here. He's at least... An enemy. I think he fights back. 
Millie, most people don't fight Gary because you don't realize you can. But he's just an enemy. This is a good song. This is a uh, Kenny song. It doesn't follow, by the way. It does. You get the bad ending for killing Gary. Honestly, you shouldn't even kill Gary. He's not really a boss fight for most things. He just he's kinda like the scientist where he is, but he's not really. But he is. Alright, now, uh This is gonna be a fun one, because I don't know if any of these bosses have music. No, they don't. They don't. I'm checking really quick, and uh, Dead Rising 4 does not have boss music. Dead Rising 4, all right, yes. Before we begin, I was going to be a star plus. Before we begin Dead Rising 4, Dead Rising 4 is going to be losing a point for everything, because Dead Rising 4 bosses mostly don't have music. The ones that have music, from what I can find online really quick, are... Lieutenant Cavall uh, Cavallero. Uh, he has music. Um, Tom has music. Uh, I think Fontana has music. Fontana, where is, there she is. And... Calder has music. My game literally bugged out earlier today when I played this. Alright, it doesn't take away the point. It loses a point, like... Let's say, like, hypothetically, if Calder were an S-tier, he would drop down to eggs because he's not music. It's essentially going to kind of put these fighting up high. He's not S-tier, I'm kidding. But, yeah, most of these fights aren't going to have music, so, uh... I don't know. Let's use, uh... How about we use some Dead Rising 3 music? we use, uh... Let's go with... Let's go with this one. We'll use uh, Teddy's, because Teddy barely got time. Alrighty, so Dead Rising 4 has Maniacs, not Psychopaths. Now, funny enough, I've actually played Dead Rising 4. A lot of people like to meme on this game. The boss fights are weird. They're less bad, but also more bad than you think. And I'm be playing them according to what you're likely to experience while playing. Which, keep this in mind, it's going to have a variety of opinions and your results may vary. This isn't going to be entirely concrete. Anyway, Queen Sandra, the first one, and honestly, she's more interesting than Ted. I give her maybe, I don't know, let's put her above Isabella. There, that seems fair. She is a knight in shining armor. She has a kind of a cutscene. You make fun of her and you say she's inbred, and then she has a bunch of knights. You kill two of them right next to her, and then you fight her. She has a flaming sword, like a sword and a shield. It's not a bad fight. It's okay enough. Um, you have to run through a medieval area. It's really not the worst fight in existence. Um, for some reason, though, Dead Rising 4 really takes the idea of revenge hits too much, so it's almost impossible to, like, you can't, like, damage caps. It's kind of annoying in this game. But it is the case. Anyway, that's Queen Sandra. I, th I don't think she's a terrible fight. Captain Black Friday Beard. Admittedly, I guess he's above Diego. Captain Black Friday Beard is a pirate that spawns on a boat in the Willamette Mall. The problem with this is... It's just kind of awkward. Like, he's a kind of a deadly fight, but he also doesn't have a large health pool, from my understanding. His theme is that Captain Black Friday Beard, he's a pirate, Black Friday, get it? It's a pun. Which, he at least attacks you. And I like the theme of a pirate. I think it's fun. Pirate mascot. He's not good. How's it going, Ellis? Great to see you. Ellis, attorney at law. But he's better than Diego. He's not frustrating. He's just kind of there. Like, he's the most there boss fight, I think, of all the boss fights in this game. He's, he's literally there. That's it. I'm glad you think I have good taste. All right. So, I actually do have a theme now. Apparently, Fontana has a theme. So, let's listen to it. Is it going to load? Maybe. Maybe. Is it going to load? I don't know. Not that one. 
Dead Rising music's kind of weird because Dead Rising 4 has a lot of strings. I don't think the string music is bad, funny enough. Fontana is... Thematically, she's supposed to be on par with like, I think maybe like Boykin or something. Like I think her gimmick is that she is the head of the military and she's the one doing the operation to make the zombies into like farmers or something like that. I would put her, there's a lot of C tiers here. I think I'd put her right above Captain Black Friday Beard. Like she's a mandatory boss fight, so she has to work. There's gonna be a lot of rough ones here. And you know what? At least she has a song. At the very least, she has a song, which this is phase one of her song. If it gets better, maybe we get her rank up. It's okay. At least it's eventful. Okay, so now we're gonna be having another boss of the boss, uh, another boss of the song. Tom. Tom is likely going to be an okay boss. I think Tom goes above Cletus. This is going to be weird, but hear me out. Hear me out. Tom is a fight with actual progression. He's supposed to be the big bad where he kind of takes you in. He's like, oh, you can help us. You betrayed us. And then he's executing your teammate Hammond. His fight is essentially just three shooters. I guess you're good with guns, it's fun. You'll summon enemies, but the enemies actually don't hold you back. You don't have to kill them. You just have to hit Tom. Which, the fact that he has a song, the fact that he's actually a boss fight and not just like a rail, I give him props. They tried. He's not great, but he's certainly not the worst. I put Tom in C. I think Tom is a very fair, like, C. He's not a frustrating fight, but he's not very, like, he could be better. I think the problem as well is that he is just ranged attacks only, and sometimes it's awkward because if you hit his body, it doesn't count, and you have to hit his head, so. Ted's got a better just there than Friday Beard. Captain Black Friday Beard being there is weird because he's not really, like, there there. He's like, he will fight back, but also, like, Ted has the gimmick going for him. Ted's got a heart in music and also Snowflake. Ted, you have to kind of put in the early game. Captain Black Friday Beard's a mid-game boss. That's his problem. He's weird. He's a mid-game boss. But, yes. Anyway, another boss here with music. How shocking. Apparently, it is James Capillero. Okay, this fight is actually kind of cool. It would be beats here. If. It wasn't on rails. Dead Rising is going to have a lot of these problems. Everything's on rails. I think he's interesting. I put him above health. At the very least, his rail isn't the end of the world. The whole idea is you do a quarter of his health, uh, he'll jump back up. Uh, you kill his goons, do a quarter of his health. This is also where they introduce the exosuit. The exosuit, admittedly, is kind of fun. If you're not ever going to be shafted with this fight, I think this fight is fair enough to where they kind of let you test out the exosuit. You get, the, you get the Gatling gun, I like his design, I think he's one of the more interesting characters in Dead Rising 4, which is funny, Dead Rising 4 doesn't have all bad characters. Also, guess what, he has a cutscene! He's one of the only bosses with a cutscene! Funny if all the bosses I'm ranking higher have cutscenes attached to them. Who would have guessed? Setting a theme is funny and fun. I like Lieutenant Cavalera. In fact, you know what? I would put him higher. Let's, let's give him, I don't know, above Evan. The more I think about this fight, the more I don't hate this fight. I think this fight's fun. I think it is a fun fight. So there is that. Okay, now we're back to not having music. So um, how about we listen to, let's do the twins. There. The Grim Gobbler. You know why they call him the Grim Gobbler, right? Because he sucks. Oh God, this guy is boring, but he's somehow better than Red. The Grim Gobbler is a guy who uses footballs. I mean, he's funny. That's his gimmick. But, like, his weapon sucks. He should be, like, the first boss of the game that you fight. <laughs> the funniest part about him is the Grim Gobbler. He summons footballers who just... I don't like the Grim Gobbler. He's just a glorified sex joke. And I don't even make it that way. I make it that way, because he's dumb. Also, half the time, he won't go into his arena. 
But like, I guess he's a fight. I don't know, Captain Black Friday Beard. All right, so here's the difference. Captain Black Friday Beard has a ramp up. You have to go through the boat. It's exciting. Ca Grim Gobbler, you go into one room. You kill him. You leave the one room. It's a gym. It's weird. Like, he doesn't have as big of an arena. So it's just... They tried? Tedisa Claws. Okay. This is going to be a weird one. He is actually on par with Queen Sandra. I think he is actually a step above. I put him above Cletus. Sinister Claws is... I feel like they tried to give some of the bosses in Dead Rising 4 the stories. It wasn't a cutscene, but with that, what happens is it's three phases. You enter his arena, and then he tells you a story about how Christmas is being haunted by you or something like that. I don't really care about the story, but they try to set it up. And they try to frame it as like, oh, here's three things. Let me think the 249 months. Enjoy the emotes in the scissors, and thank you. The clown. The clown. I hope you're doing great today. The 49 months is a lot, by the way. A channel founder. So, the Citizen Clause, like, at least they try to frame it. I feel like they tried this early, and then later it just doesn't get framed. Like, the Grim Gobbler exists. Captain Black Friday, also to Shirai. No, I'm good. I've been, I'm doing good today. It's been fun. So, at least they tried. And then the boss fight's kind of ugly, but his weapon's cool. You get Santa's sack. By the way, let's talk about the Dead Rising 4 weapons. This is Claws, Santa's Sack. Queen Sandra, Shield and Sword. Uh, kind of like Friday Beard, he gives you a sword, which you just turn into an ice sword. Grim Gobbler gives you bomb footballs. They're not very good. They're not fun weapons to use either. So, that explains a lot of that. And let's go for another song for the next one. Let's go to Jerry. Okay. So, the Scare King is arguably decent. I think the Scare King is pretty cool. This is one of the most boss fight boss fights you're going to get. Who is the Scare King, you might ask? He is a guy with a pumpkin on his head who's like a scarecrow, and you have to go into his farm. It's a cool arena. There's fire in the middle, like the scarecrow, and he'll summon three way, uh, two ways, four coming out on the third way. Similar to Sadistic Claws, but I think he does it better because, one, it's creepier. Two, he uses the Reaper from Dead Rising 3, which is a cool weapon. And his boss fight's actually kind of cool. He'll fire three pumpkins at you, you're meant to dodge them, and then you hit him in retaliation. And then that'll kind of repeat. I don't think it's a bad fight, honestly. I think it's a solid fight with a solid gimmick, and it's one of the closest Dead Rising 4 gets to being decent. The Dead Rising 4 opinions might be controversial, because a lot of people don't really know Dead Rising 4, and they said to be total trash, but a lot of Dead Rising doesn't really hit total trash. Dead Rising 4 is a lot more mid than you expect it to be. But I will tell you, this is probably the highest that Dead Rising 4 goes. So. Anyway, this will be fitting for this one because, uh, in all honesty, it is a repeat, kind of. Remember Sean from Dead Rising 1? He's back in Pog form. What that means is the cult comes back in Dead Rising 4. It's a neat thing, and I would rank it low. I would rank it, uh, let's say, right right in front of Ted. Let's put it right above Ted. As a gimmick, it's neat to bring... It's probably one of the coolest parts of Dead Rising 4 that they bring back the cults. Uh, I like the fact that they they look good. They have the same raincoat, green mask, and you have a cult leader. The problem is, you walk up one flight of stairs, and there he is. There's no lead into this fight. The, I, a lot of my problems with Dead Rising 4 fights is you just never lead into them. Like, the good ones you at least kind of lead into, and if this one had more of, like, even Captain Black Friday, it's funny because I rank this guy lower and I'm complimenting him. If it had more of an actual lead into this, or some, some more of, like, a stake in the cult, it'd be cool, but the cult just comes back. Neat throwback. Bad weapon, you get a sword. You turn it into the ice sword. That's it. All right, let's, uh, let's go with, uh, I don't know. We'll go with disease theme again. Okay. Sybil! F... D... Under Gary, funny enough. I put it under Gary. Sybil is arguably one of the worst fights in Dead Rising 4. A lot of people don't play Dead Rising 4, but Sybil is the embodiment of what's wrong with this game. Her fight is that her crew is a bunch of, like... They want to use the zombies for their own purpose, like entertainment. 
like think think like TK on how he uses the zombies for entertainment. It's like they want to have a pet zombie like Shaun of the Dead, but like not as interesting. One, there's no lead in. As you run through the arena, the characters run away from you. You don't actually fight them. They don't fight them in waves like they're meaning to. They just run away. I guess my problem with this fight is that I think it's bugged. It might be a genuinely bugged fight. Because when you enter Sybil's arena, she doesn't leave. You go through her boss door, and then she'll stand perfectly still while you wail on her. She might fight back, but she almost never fights back. It's a weird fight with, admittedly, that could have been cool. That's the problem. It could have been cool. But it's... Oh, it's Dead Rising 4. Because she just doesn't. And that's the problem. So I would place her low, just because the fight doesn't work half the time. I don't know anyone who's made this fight work. So, he is like Dead Rising 4 bad game as a meme. Anyway, Calder, apparently he actually has a song. So, his song is this. Calder! Ready? Ready? I'm gonna drop it! I'll drop it. Here. Right under 10. Calder is almost right. Calder is almost okay. Apollo LOL! End of the raid. Welcome on in Raiders. That's a lot of trains. Welcome. Green lights. You may have green. Now. We're doing a Dead Rising tier list, and, uh, hope you have fun signal. Also, if you enjoy that game. Right now, we are judging my taste in bosses. We're kind of uh, getting to the end of this list, roughly. But here's... Uh, Calder ends up being right below Ted, because Calder can be so cool! It is the idea of a sentient zombie. It is the only... like I think it's actually the only zombie boss fight in the series. Hold on, let's look at this. Yeah, no other zombies in this. Well, don't worry about it, my friend. These things happen. You can read, can't you? Hope you had a good stream, Paul. Well, friend coming in, I'm McDyson, making a tier list. Nope, you're doing good. Calder is the only zombie in a zombie game not having a zombie boss fight? Like, come on. I am Dark Pinoy. So, it is a nice raid call. I like the train and the driving. It almost was good. Calder was almost good. And the problem with Calder is nothing you do matters. If you hit him, you're just... You have to wait. It's an auto-scroller. When you think about it, it's kind of neat that you're going against the big zombie in the exosuit, but you'll find out as you do the fight, nothing you do matters. You'll hit him to zero health, he won't die. Because, oh, you didn't get to the next phase of the fight. That's my issue with Calder. I think Calder has a grand issue with that, and that is the problem. I hope you had a good chance Paul Wall, and definitely welcome on in. Here, we already got the shoutouts, so that's perfect. And we had a lot of names here. But who do we have? We had, uh... Baltius, Paulo, King, uh, Kagira, uh, Old Road, Not Ryan, Yog, Ogenza, or Ogenzia. Sorry, I butchered your name. Uh, Tachion, W, the table, or W, T, the table. Wing Daedalus. And Muyam. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, I hope you had a good stream. We port as zombie bosses? Does it? I don't remember the zombie bosses in the Wii port. I think there's a zombie Joe, but it's not a boss. Hello, hope you're doing good today. But yeah, we're just talking about the Dead Rising uh, tier list of the enemies. Uh, really quick chat. Uh, here's Caller Part 2. And I want to go over this list. However, before I do that, I do need to play a quick ad for the Twitch ad deal. I do apologize on the timing. Uh, if I don't do it, it'll be like in three minutes, and I would rather give my group, like, you know, my final thoughts on this before doing the ad. Also, I'm gonna go back to blue because I'm probably not going to give you the full green, so you get your points back. But it's mainly because you won't be getting the full of the green. So keep that in mind. Sound good? All right, so add block Twitch Turbo or consider subbing to avoid the ad. Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna get too into the uh, the grand scheme of things here. I'm just gonna take a really quick look and talk a little bit more about maybe Dead Rising. So, happening now. And I need to get the mall music, so. Let's get the mall music. Oh, right, enough of that. There we go. Alrighty though, so I'd say this is the idea of it. Let's just double check before I really leave off anything uh, while we wait for to get back to the ad. Chat, we'll, we'll double check here. 
All right, so we have five. I think five tier one's good. How many do we have? Wait, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, I right, want 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three, and one. Okay. But hello. All right, so honestly, I think we got a pretty even spread. We'll talk more about it in a moment. I feel like this is a very nice spread of things. I think this works well for what we wanted roughly for this. Uh, we'll talk about more in a brief moment. Let's catch up on that. Boom, boom. Also, I do apologize, Paul Wall, because I think I might be ending in a moment after this. But also, I'm up really late. I've been streaming for 12... Oh my god, I've been 12 hours of streaming at this point? Also, hopefully, Levity, you got your points back. I'm gonna do the last bit of cleaning up. Ba -dum, ba -dum, bum bum ba -dum, ba -dum, bum bum Go to bed, I will in a moment. Let's consider nerd category, why is worse than F? Oh, these guys would be like, all right, if you're wondering, the scientists genuinely would be here. The scientists would actually be here, but I put them here. I'll talk about it in a moment though. About 20 seconds, training for 20 hours. Uh, I'm not training for a 24 hour. As in sound? Okay, I believe we should all be back now. Welcome back from the ad, everyone. So, I have analyzed our list here, and I also put on Mall Music 3. So we have that now. I'll probably, I don't know, cut to this on YouTube. But, we have a pretty well-rounded list from what I can feel. We don't have too many at the bottom. We don't have too many at the top. Most of the brunt's gonna be in the middle or so, with more leaning to good than bad, I think. So, from what I can count, it is 11 in A, 5 in S, 11 in B, about 20 in C. Uh, I think about 8 in D, 3 in F, and then the nerds. So, last but not least, let's take a final look around for what we have for this tier list, because this is going to encompass all the Dead Rising boss fights as a whole. I feel pretty confident in S tier. The idea of Adam, Antoine, Sean, Slappy, and Dylan, I think they're the most interesting fights. Also, I like how people notice that apparently I like fire, because two of them have flamethrowers. They're neat fights. I think they're fun. I think they embody what Dead Rising really should be. They're kind of getting to the sillier aspects and getting into those very niche roles. I think Dead Rising is a lot weaker when you get to a lot of the military guys as a heads up. But, you know, I think one boss I kind of want to rethink might be Jed. Like, honestly, I think I want to trade Jed down to, like, B. Like, let's put, like, put Jed there and put Jerry in A. Like, the more I think about it, I want those two swapped. That feels right. I know this is kind of a weird thing there. But I, I feel like that's a solid place to put them. I think that's a very nice place to kind of keep them around. But let's look at A again. In A, we have Randy, the convicts, Sullivan, Carlito, Crystal, and Amber, Larry, Cliff, Steven, Reed, and Roger together, uh, Z, and Jerry. Uh, I think the big surprise is in A tier that Dead Rising 3 is better than people really think it is, and that uh, a lot of just decent bosses go in A tier. Most of these bosses have minimal flaws. Um, most of them tend to be pretty, like, minimal things, too. Like, for instance, Convicts would be deserving of S if they had an ending cutscene, I think, and didn't spawn every 24 hours. Uh, Carlito, if you didn't have, if you didn't count the van, or if you counted all three Carlito fights, I think you would rank it A, B, and S. I think he's very solid as a boss as a whole. Uh, everyone else here, you know, minor flaws at best, or at worst, and they tend to be pretty deserving of the rank. I think B tier, I lord Jed. I don't remember how Jed is. He's solid, but I don't actually remember a whole lot about Jed now I think about it. He didn't really stick with me, if that makes sense. He stuck with me more than Harjeet, which was down here, but Jed does his job. He does his job well. In fact, the more I talk about Jed, I, I'm going to stop talking about Jed. I'm gonna, if I keep talking about Jed, he's going to get lower and lower. Let's stop talking about Jed. You know what, Jed? You've made your way all the way down to the nerd. Jed will slowly make his way down to the bottom of the list. No, I think he's solid, though. I think he does his job. He's, uh, he's like a hunter. He's the zombie hunter, right? And uh, it's funny because a lot of the final bosses of this game ended up around B. Like, TK, I think, is the best of the final bosses. Um, like, the final bosses are TK, Hemlock, uh, Brock, and Calder. Um... TK is the best. I think he's just the most fair beyond them. I think he's the most interesting. He kind of does enough of Brock, but also it's not totally limited, so I like him there. And then as well, like, you can tell a lot of these fights are ones that are neat enough, but they tend to just have some flaws. Scare King only has the flaw that he's in a bad game. 
If he was in Dead Rising like 2, people would love the Scare King. I think the Scare King is a fine enough boss that people don't give enough credit for because no one's going to give Dead Rising 4 credit. I'm also just kind of just re-looking at some of these and just analyzing anyone who's missing. Um, I feel like it may have done Seymour dirty. I think Seymour might deserve one bump up. Like, I'll put him above Rock, just one bump up. I done Seymour a little bit dirty. I think he deserves slightly more praise. Uh, I feel pretty confident in C. I don't feel like I've misjudged anything in C. I'm also using Ted as kind of the benchmark. Like, if you're above Ted, you're considered decent. If you're under Ted, you're kind of eh. Oh, but admittedly, I do like Calder more than Ted. I just wish Calder wasn't an auto scroller. The problem with Calder is, for what he is, he could be so much more. You know what? Maybe I will put him... You know what, Calder? You can have a solid... You can be one above Ted. How does that sound? You can have one above Ted. Or Ted. If it was Ted and Snowflake together, they'd probably be around a low B, but they're different. They're different fights. Uh, let's see everyone else here. Yeah, everyone else feels about right. Uh, Lieutenant Caballero was honestly a surprise, but the more I think about that fight, the more I like it. I don't think it's a bad fight. Um, uh, Darlene, I wish were a better fight. The fight's kind of awkward, but that's kind of the case of mobile fights. The only really good one is Slappy. Let's see what we have. I think Joe's in a solid spot. Isabella's in a good spot. Uh, Cletus feels right. Hall family's in a decent spot. I think Diego must should be lower. Maybe. We'll keep Diego there. Anyway, yeah, I think this mostly makes sense. And then for anyone who missed it, the nerds of the scientists. These guys just die. You just shoot them. They're like a worse version of Gary. That's why Gary's in D tier. Because these guys die immediately. Like, you enter the room, they just... They collapse. And also, you know, most of the F tiers are like... Two non-fights, and then a fight that's just kind of boring. Like, it's tedious. It's boring. Uh, it's kind of the worst of Dead Rising 3, while Sybil's the worst of Dead Rising 4. Which, I guess it's funny that a Dead Rising 2 fight's technically the, the meme one, but... Yeah. Anyway, Chad, I think this is the ultimate list. I think Adam's at the top, and Marion's at the bottom. Truthfully, the scientists, if we were to actually rank them, I would say would be right here. And you didn't put them in the nerds tier, I think they'd be here, but I think the scientists being here is funny. So we're gonna keep them under nerds. I think it's a, a fun little addition. Anyway, what do you all think, chat? All that Spitfire? They do. They do. What do you all think about this list? I think this is a decent list. I think it is a fair list. I think it does the job of Dead Rising quite well, and I think it kind of encapsulates what I think about the series. Uh, a lot of good. I think Dead Rising is more good than bad, or it's even more mid. Uh, even when it gets bad, I mean, a lot of the D tiers are still kind of interesting. I do quite uh, enjoy... Like, the story of Albert a lot. Um, Stacy story-wise, isn't bad. A lot of these are just kind of the fights are weird more than anything. I feel like D tier is either one, the fight is in a weird spot it shouldn't be, or two, what that boss should be is so weird. Like, Red, story-wise, he's mid, and also his boss fight. He's meant to be the final boss. He's boring. Stacy, cool story. Weird final boss fight. Commander Kane, I guess, okay, fight. Weird story. Like, this is all just kind of weird fights, and it, it mild improvements can put them higher, so. Anyway, uh, yeah. This has been the Dead Rising tier list. I guess I'm gonna post this on Twitter so everyone can hate me. That sounds right, right? Save or download? Okay, I'm gonna do that really quick. But, I'll post it there. Anyway, if you wanna be in the VOD. If you're watching this on YouTube, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I, I, I don't know, I'll probably get up this weekend? Hopefully. I think that's good. I don't know, how long did this take me to do? Two hours? I hope not two hours. Either way, this is what would get me hated. What do you think would get me hated? What, would you, what do you think would get me hated? Also, yeah, if you disagree, yell at me. There you go.